Connor is an episodic and narrative-driven interactive tale in which the player faces many mysteries and challenges. Set in a wintry rural environment in 1970, you incarnate Carl Faubert, a war veteran and now private detective who must travel to Atamipec Lake in northern Canada to solve a simple yet lucrative case. Your client is a rich industrialist and copper mine magnate named W. Hamilton. The latter accuses the local Cree community of vandalizing and stealing from his summer residence and his hunting manor. The Crees are no friends to Hamilton as they accuse him of destroying sacred lands for the sole purpose of increased profits. From driving to shooting to scene searching, Connor combines the atmosphere and immersion of a modern survival title with the deep storytelling and puzzle-solving aspects of a traditional adventure game. By blending and wrapping several gameplay mechanics around its scenario, the game aims to blur the lines that define today's genres. That is Parable Studios' own description of their game, Connor. There are some interesting points raised in this description, and we'll see if the game fits the description that they're using to go against this. Connor first intrigued me due to the name matching my channel name, but after that I discovered that it held some ideas that I'm quite interested in, such as detective work and general mystery, as well as just a lot of snow, which is something that I quite like. So, the game instantly got my attention. From the beginning, it's presented quite nicely, with nice clear fonts titling your location, and also, of course, titling the game. The contrast of yellow on white is very striking, and it's quite pleasing to just start the game and have that. The game also has quite an interesting beginning that you just start by driving into the town and you're faced with your first dilemma which is crashing, which was somewhat foreshadowed by the fact that while driving your character, Kyle, just carelessly throws a cigarette out the window. Doesn't seem that he's a very conscious and observant person, which is... Not the best characteristics for a PI, but, you know, there's there's got to be like a balance of being observant and also just being foolhardy. It seems that for some classic PI characters, such as Philip Marlowe, just being foolhardy and lucky is a very strong card to play. But Kyle crashes his car in a head-on collision and awakes to find that the world has frozen over, which is kind of crazy. This sets the player up to expect peculiar circumstances within the game, but also given that it's Canada, it's not that much of a stretch. Now, the game, as we know from the official description, is trying to lean heavily on the narrative pulling you through. Which is good, I, I like that, um, and it has some hits and misses there. So the reason for you to be in the game is a very typical Scooby-Doo-like mystery reason. There's a wealthy man that has upset the locals, and yeah, it's, it's not groundbreaking at all. It's very basic story writing, especially for this genre. Now, if the game had managed to take that simple idea and subvert it in an interesting way, that would have been commendable. Sadly, Connor does not perform on that duty. Again, it's also very bold to find that your one contact for the location is dead when you arrive, giving you motivation to uncover this newfound mystery, but it also feels a bit like the game 
plays that hand too early. It would be far more interesting, I think, to spend maybe two to three hours working with this character, working with W. Hamilton, the wealthy business owner, to try and solve the initial case and then for it to suddenly change when when your back is turned, he dies. That would give it a greater sense of urgency rather than turning up and finding a dead body. It feels more like your character, Carl Forbear, should just phone the police, but that doesn't happen. Now the game sort of talks that away by saying that the snow has blocked the power lines and this is the 1970s so that's well and truly feasible but it also doesn't feel like enough for your character to pursue this again if your one contact in the region is dead and you can't find anyone else I, I think it's worth you know looking after your health, keeping yourself warm, and then trying to find a way to make contact to the outside world, rather than trying to solve a mystery. But, as is the case with a lot of media, if the main character didn't do these strange things, we wouldn't have a story to go with, so can't complain too much. I was also somewhat let down by the fact that as soon as you arrive in the game world, you are forced to follow the plot narrative in just one way. With the idea that the game is looking to blend a lot of genres and a lot of mechanics, it seems somewhat disheartening that you have to go find W. Hamilton first before exploring the city, or town rather. When I played, I wanted to go to the first house that I saw because I had just been in a car crash and I wanted to contact someone. You would naturally want to go to the first house that you see, but the game just wouldn't let me. It would have been very good if I could have gotten out of the car, looked at that house, seen that there was no one there, and picked up from that point of mystery, but the game can't handle that, which is in some ways pretty fair because it is a very small independent work, but it would have been nice to have that option, or at least not show me that house before showing me the place that it actually wanted me to go to. Speaking of going to where you want to go to, there are no map markers. You don't have a mini-map, and anything on the map is just determined by your location, where you're facing, and the houses with the residence names written on, which I think is a very good way to do this kind of survival detective story, especially one set in the 70s, just using a map and using natural orientation, that's, that's great, that's really good. And it also plays into the survival aspects that if you want to navigate where you're going, you're holding out your map and looking around, but you've got a way up, is navigation more important than protection? because at any moment, wolves might come out and attack you. So that's that's done quite, quite well, I think. While you're exploring the world, the game's draw distance is quite weak, which is probably a product of the game being an, an independent work and by a studio that has only made one other game. Everything else that they have worked on has been sort of for educational purposes, interactive media like that. So it's probably a byproduct of managing that sort of aspect. However, it works for this setting and it works for this genre. Because the world is so snowy, you can't see too far ahead of you. And the studio has done quite a good job of blending in other sound effects and lighting to 
add to a great sense of loneliness and exploration as you go through, creating what is essentially a survival horror sort of feeling. So the game, as I saw it, was divided into two halves. The first half being exploration around the southern part of the town and working out the mystery. This works out pretty well. You can explore around and try to find clues. Uh, it essentially just boils down to taking pictures of ice and taking pictures of people and just finding items. I guess this aspect connects up to their traditional adventure game sort of idea that you are finding the keys to progress to the next part of the puzzle. There's nothing too cerebral. You see that there is, for example, you see that there is a skidoo that you want to use, but the tire tracks are missing and there's no gasoline. So you just need to go around and find all the items to put together the skidoo so then you can travel through the snow. Or there is a locked door and the key is at the bottom of a hole. So you just put a magnet on a rope and get it out and open up the door and you just find more survival equipment. It's, uh, it's very, very basic. There's no puzzles, in my opinion. In fact, that's, that's a lie. There's one puzzle. There's one puzzle that involves rotating valves so that electrical currents will flow which again is just a very basic puzzle it, it almost feels like a filler paint by numbers puzzle but considering that there wasn't any other puzzles in the game it was it was welcomed exploring around the town is purposely very lonely everyone has left or died and you find yourself fighting against the weather now I'm not usually one for like survival games. Survival horror is good. I, I enjoy survival horror because you have a purpose. Uh, survival games are not really my wheelhouse. Now Connor managed to keep me in because of the narrative aspect. You're not surviving for the sake of survival, you're surviving for the sake of the mystery. And at its heart there are three core mysteries. Who did you crash into? Who killed your employer? And why is the world suddenly just frozen over? Those are the three core mysteries. The last one is sort of split into two, with you trying to work out the death of another local. And I feel like for an introductory stage, those, those three clues are enough to keep you going and to uh, pull you into the rest of the game. Now I said that everyone else is dead, that's not strictly true, as there is one local left behind, meaning that this isn't technically a walking simulator anymore because there is another character in the game. His introduction is very good, he's a character that I really like, um, but maybe that's just because there are no other characters in the game. But he also asks you for a very typical fetch quest. He is essentially just a talking door to which you need to find the key. Which is fine. He still adds a bit of depth to the world. And he's interesting. But again, it makes you wonder why your character doesn't just hold up with him in his hut, wait for the snow to pass over, and try to contact the police. It's, it's very bizarre, and you never get the chance to talk to him about anything. He just says, go get me a drink and I'll give you a coat and you can move on. Why, as a detective, why, why are you not staying around to ask him questions? It's, it's a bit of a letdown that he is just a talking door. Once you piece together the story of the southern part of the town, you understand a little bit more what is going on. And with that, you can progress forwards into the northern part of the town, where you hope to find more clues about Hamilton, 
and to finally meet some survivors of the blizzard. Again, I could very easily view this as essentially being one big door with essentially four keys to move forwards, but it is basing it on the narrative and the mystery point itself. And that's kind of the point of this game. However, the latter half of the game tunnels you into just one sudden tone shift. There are more wolves to deal with and I found myself just running away from them to move to the next thing, thinking that I was finding clues to progress forwards, but really it was just tunneling me towards the end. So the game ends up being very, very rushed in the latter half. It's not a game of two equal halves at all. Now, looking back at Parable's description of the game, it's noted that Connor is an episodic and narrative-driven interactive tale. Keyword there, episodic. The game is not episodic. The fact that the game tunnels you and rushes you at the end, to me, implies that this was maybe, perhaps, just intended to be episode one of the mystery, or perhaps the starting area was intended to be the first episode, and the second area was going to be episode two, but they ran out of time and money and just squeezed it into one. Or maybe they do indeed intend on releasing a second part, but as it goes for now, Connor is being sold as one experience, and it's a very quick and sudden end to that experience. Looking overall at the storytelling and narrative, having a narrator is pretty good, but it feels kind of weird that it's a disembodied third person narrator and not Carl himself narrating like a true noir detective. The characters' relations are almost good, they, they seem somewhat realistic, there are a mix of different people within the town, or there were a mix of different people within the town, and they seem to relate to each other in an understandable human way. Some things feel a bit off and disconnected, and you may have noticed as well in the game's description that some of it feels a little bit off as well. I'm putting that down to the fact that the developers are clearly first and foremost French speakers as opposed to English speakers, so I'm willing to overlook some bizarre choices there. However, it must be noted that this is a game being sold as a narrative experience narrative driven in fact which you know if you're gonna go full on narrative you should probably work on getting your translation sorted and you should work on having stories that are a little bit more intriguing and not so baseline detective story the introduction of supernatural concepts is welcomed but again it's mostly squeezed into the latter half where you face these concepts and so you don't really get much time with them. I would have been happy to see the game take a more X-Files turn towards the end, but it sort of gleamed over and rushed through. Going back to the description, Parable Studio claims that the game is blending and wrapping several gameplay mechanics around its scenario, with the game aiming to blur the lines that define today's genres. I think that is an undertaking that is far beyond their reach. Uh, it's commendable that they tried, but essentially they have just made a point-and-click adventure. There are survival aspects, but that's not really blurring the lines between any genres. The end boss felt Somewhat, I don't, I don't know how I felt about the end boss to the game. I wasted a bunch of bullets shooting at him before realizing that I should just run away, which feels like a natural progression. But 
considering that the end boss essentially boiled down to suddenly just running away, it's not very rewarding. The biggest thing that I've written on my notepad here is that it feels like half the game is missing. Now that's not just because the game tunnels you into that end, but just that there are no characters. There's one, one other character that acts only as a talking door. Your character as well is not narrating his own story, which just makes it feel like he is a disembodied ghost. There's so much more that they could have explored and they missed the mark. One little aside that I can't really fit in anywhere is that playing this on the Switch is an absolute nightmare. Now, I wanted to play it on the Switch because having a narrative that is a detective story and having a detective story, I feel, lends itself to sometimes unplugging and playing in an armchair. But the game is not really presentable uh, in its current state. Every now and then the game will pause for about 50 seconds of loading time and it seems very arbitrary when this will happen. Even if I've been stood around looking at a map for the past minute and a half, I'll take one step away and suddenly there is a pause in the game with a small loading circle. Why wasn't the game loading the area around me already? It's It seems very bizarre to me. But anyway, it sounds like I've been very hard on the game, and I guess I have to some extent, but I do feel that this is a promising start from the studio into more game work and more narrative storytelling as opposed to their other interactive educational media. The game was funded through Kickstarter, with funding reaching just over 44,000 Canadian dollars, which is about 4,000 over their goal, which is quite good. However, the lead developer, Alexandra Fisset, later said that the funding from Kickstarter would have produced a five-minute game. That just comes across really ungrateful. You made it over your goal and you're saying that it's not enough money. It's it's kind of disheartening. They got later funding from the Canada Media Fund, which I guess pushed them on to make the, the rest of the game. Now the game is still very, very short, so uh, I'm not sure how they managed their time on this project, but yeah, there you go. But I'm hoping that they will see Connor as a learning experience and that the studio will be able to move on to bigger and better things and hopefully one day meet their goal of blurring the lines that define today's genres.